day on Mars is like, well, scientifically speaking, a day on Mars is like spending a whole day inside a CTR scan. So a lot of radiation and cancer for your body. Hi everyone, my name is Luciana. I'm an architect. I'm also an analog astronaut as a part of a team called the Mars Society. So I was formed as an architect actually. I studied architecture 10 years ago back in Lima in Peru. And for me, architecture was all about designing pretty buildings, construction, civil engineering, and that's it. And for my last year, I went to do my bachelor or master thesis, bachelor thesis to Spain. And there, I remember it was 2011, and the really big earthquake hit Japan. And every architect in Europe was talking about disaster relief. For me, this was like a very new topic. Like, never, it really opened my eyes to a whole new world of possibilities in architecture field. And made me realize that architecture was not only about designing pretty houses anymore. So, well, I'm just gonna fast forward like four years ago. I saw in the newspaper there was like four engineer students going to a simulation on, uh, about Mars in the desert in Utah, in the States. So it really fascinated me the idea of going to the desert to this training facility for astronauts and, and testing your project. So I, I was like asking myself many questions like who goes here, how can I apply here, and what sort of projects come here. And I ended up finding pro, uh, projects from programmers, uh, engineers, physicists, biologists, so in other words, scientists. And I found out that my career has nothing or very little to do with scientists. So, so then I realized that in order to go to this place that really fascinated me, I have to answer one question. What can my design do for innovation? So, I found this picture. This is actually taken from the inside of the station. This is a window. It's one of the two windows there is in the station. It's very small and it's very, very high. So, in order to see for one of the windows, you can't. So, this is a design issue I found here. And you ask yourself, like, was there even an architect involved in the construction of this place? So, this is what was on the top of design issues. How? Radiation. Radiation, as I mentioned before, radiation is one of the biggest problems to get humans on Mars. So, with that in mind, the yellow thing you're seeing there is egg. It's powder egg, actually. You put water on that and poof, egg. So, this is what you have as an astronaut on your daily meal. Uh, the heated egg or the heated meat, if you compare that with the lettuce or like a strawberry, then this becomes like a really luxurious tool for the space. So, the greenhouse, where you have the lettuce and all the organic meals, is the main source of life for every astronaut outer space. So, this is what they're going to focus on, the greenhouse. And in order to create like the perfect microhabitat for these fruits to grow. So, I started designing how was I going to make this possible and so to solve the radiation somehow. So, I started to increase in the area of the surface of the greenhouse by putting all these like small triangles which actually try to, by increasing the area, I have less heat inside, and less heat means like less radiation. So I started like drawing all these sections, the plans. We took it to the station, we did a lot of tests. It was very challenging because you have to be in 100% simulation as if you were an astronaut. So I have to use space suit, the helmet, oxygen tank, everything is very heavy. So it was really challenging to do this by myself and also with some of my crew members who helped with me. And this was the result. It was uh, the parametric structure, we are, which I explained before, the little triangles which are used to expand the area, plus the white fabric you see, which was made from seaweed in order to be like a sort of a shield against radiation. So, at the end it didn't work 100%, but the cool thing about this project is that it's not only, it's not only working for other space, but also for Earth. We took this project, well, the actual technology that was used for building this project, to the, a very extreme environment in Cusco, this is in Peru. It's a very, very high altitude, so it's a very extreme environment. And it worked there. So it was really encouraging that this work was not only meant for other space, but also for Earth. Well, at the end I went back to Peru, 
after a couple of weeks of research. And uh, I had my very, very first interview. And I remember I was very excited. I was really looking forward for it because I never had one. And I came across with this title. It was Peruvian engineer goes to uh, facility research for astronauts. And um, I got like, hmm. Uh, well, I'm not an engineer, and I have nothing against engineers, but after all the research I made and all the things I've gone through, like trying to apply to this place, and it was the first architect that I was going here, and I was really proud of my career. I really want to show that I'm doing something. So this, this didn't happen once. It happened twice, and three times, and more times. People confuse me with engineer. So at the end, I found myself like in the middle of two fields. With one side, architecture, many entities were telling me that this project is not architecture related. I was like sort of like going out of the boundaries of architecture itself. And on the other side, I was not as formed as a scientist, so I was not considered a scientist as well. So I was really like asking myself, which path should I follow? Like my, my fascination for this project took me like some point that I was going away from architecture. So I found out this workshop that was about virtual reality in a school of architecture in London. So at the end of the workshop, it was not the virtual reality that I, I learned from that, but the, the multidisciplinary projects and the people working there that actually engaged. And, and when I talk about my research of Mars, they didn't thought that it was a crazy idea. Like, contrary, they, they found it fascinating. And it really, it really seen that suddenly like Mars idea, Mars architecture wasn't such a crazy idea as I thought at some point. So even though I didn't end up working in disaster relief, I didn't end up working in virtual reality, all of this research, all of these places I went, like took me to many, many places and introduced me to many, many people from biologists to robotics to physicists, entrepreneurs, neuroscientists and it took me here to Japan where I'm doing my master thesis degree in trying to redefine really, really what architecture on Mars is. And well, what I can tell is like, I remember one year ago when some people asked me, what is the research about? And I was like, it's about Mars, architecture on Mars. And people asked me like, Mars, the planet Mars? And I was like, yes, yes, the planet Mars. And, and at one point I was like, people would think I was going crazy. Now I feel really stupid about feeling like embarrassed. But, but think about it. Like, but for one point, like if, if your colleagues are think like it's weird, you will also feel insecure. But one thing that they don't teach you is like, in order to be bold, you have to follow your interests with what you already have. And then is where innovation happens. Thank you, everyone.